Hi everyone, in this tutorial I want to go over the very basics of subsurface scattering using Arnold Shader inside of Maya. If you want to learn subsurface scattering even quicker than this tutorial, there's a link in the description for my super short tutorial that just goes through each of the settings without as much background information. Firstly, let's just discuss what subsurface scattering is. So. I've got the Arnold help document here. If we look at these reflected rays, the blue ones, when we create a material that doesn't have subsurface scattering, the rays hit the surface and then are bounced off and that's what we see in what Maya renders, Arnold renders. But when we have subsurface scattering, you see the, the light rays penetrate the surface of the object and then they go to a particular depth that we will set on our Arnold shader, they get thrown around and then they end up bouncing out at a different angle than they came in and that's what creates the subsurface scattering. So that's what subsurface scattering is. So let's quickly dive into how we can set this up. So we're going to look at this flower here in this tutorial and I've just got a basic shader on everything at the moment but I've got my lighting set up. So let's assign a new material and I'm going to use a standard surface here we go and the first thing I want to do is take the base weight down and the specular weight down we're just getting rid of anything else and we're just going to be totally focused on the subsurface and then the subsurface drop down so in the subsurface section, we want to set the weight to 1. That's going to turn subsurface scattering on. And typically you're going to leave this at 1. Um, you want full subsurface scattering if you have it. What I also want to do right now is to change the colour here to a mid-grey. So everything is 0.18 in the R, G and B to get that mid-grey. And the reason I'm doing this is because we don't want to worry about the overall colour of the object at this moment. We just want to focus on the subsurface scattering. I'm just going to crop a region to render so that we're not wasting as much time waiting for renders to come out. So we can see what the subsurface scattering has done here. The light is now going inside the object but we're getting some really weird results. We set the colour to grey, we're not seeing any grey, we're just getting a white kind of render. And you might see that when you apply subsurface scattering for the first time and it's not anything that you've done wrong, it just means that you need to set the rest of the settings correctly. It's worth pointing out that when you first render your subsurface scattering you're probably going to get a lot of noise and that is because in the render settings on the Arnold tab the subsurface scattering uh, samples are set to 2 and that's really low so you can increase these at this point if you want to get more of an idea of what your subsurface scattering is doing so you might want to go up to 3 or 4 so we can see from the render, we've lost all of um, that shadowing that we had and the leaves just look really too transparent, they look a bit like wax. So we need to go and just adjust the next lot of settings and one of those is the radius. So the radius is the one that I find the most confusing in terms of terminology when you're first starting out. The radius is how deep the light scatters before it bounces back out and you would expect it to be a numerical value but it's actually a colour and in its most basic form you would set the radius to the colour that you want to be below the surface so if you were doing skin you would set this to a pinky red colour because that is the colour that the light is going to pick up and then and render back out and if we get into it a little bit more Basically the radius takes these three values and each of the red, green and blue values can scatter to a different depth. So, but you just want to set this to the colour that you want. So for me, I want something like this kind of greeny yellow colour um, to be scattered from my leaf. Maybe we go a little bit more green. Let's do another render at this point. 
so looking at this now we are starting to get that color that we just added to the radius coming through but it still looks really bad we need to now adjust how deeply the scatter works before we do that i just want to talk about this arnold subsurface type very quickly um random walk is just how maya and arnold interpret the um the settings and from everything i've researched people recommend using random walk v2 so we might as well switch to that now we are now going to look at adjusting the scale so the scale is a multiplier of the radius so at one the scale is just using the radius values if we were to make this scale value higher then we are going to get more subsurface scattering and it will be deeper a lot of the time you will want to drop the scale um, but it depends it depends on this, how you've modeled your scene if it's to scale then you might not need to tweak this very much but if you have modeled say in meters and this is rendering in centimeters you might need to drop the scale down quite a lot to like 0.01 for it to work so the scale we are going to try and adjust so i might start by dropping this to something like 0.1 we'll just let this render finish I'm actually getting really nice effects now. We can see some areas where the subsurface scattering is happening more. And so I think I'm happy with the values that I've got here. And now I can go on and talk to you about the next steps. What you would want to do is go back and introduce some of the things we took away before. So one of those was we just set the subsurface color to a mid gray. This would be where you would plug in your albedo or diffuse map if you have that. Or in my case, because I'm just doing a simple tutorial, I am just going to come in here and set this to a um, green colour that I would expect the leaf to be. I might just um, drop the saturation of that slightly. And then another thing that we took out was the specular. So we can set the specular weight back to one. And again, if you have a roughness map, then you would just plug it into the roughness value. And then for something like a leaf, I expect it to have a little bit of specularity, but maybe not quite 0.4. So I might change that to something like 0.5. The one thing that we're not going to bring back in, though, is the base weight. We've actually switched it so that we don't have a base color. And the base color is going to be the subsurface color instead. So now that I've actually brought the specular in, I actually want to make this a bit darker again because the specular's kind of lightened up the, the color of the leaf. So once I'd added the color and the specular back in, I decided just to tweak my subsurface settings slightly more, I turned the scale down and brightened the radius a little bit. If I just compare to having the color that I've chosen just on the base, we can really see what the subsurface is doing. Can you see the difference there? And that is just by adding subsurface and changing the radius and the scale and the subsurface tab. This is just a basic overview. This obviously isn't a photo real leaf because I haven't painted a texture, I haven't added bump and everything to this, but I really do think it shows you what we can achieve with subsurface and helps you to understand how you can set that up and then you know if you've got all your other texture maps once you use those you can end up getting something that does look really realistic.